Hey everyone, I'm Chris Keats, and first and foremost, I want to say everything is going to be okay. Hear that again, everything is going to be okay. We just got news in Ontario that we are locking down for the fourth or fifth that I've lost count now, and my immediate reaction was one of anger. And I took a breath and realized that it's not anger towards someone else affecting me that is the appropriate response. I'm reading Anand Merota's book and just going through some of his teachings. And as you go through transcendence and learning how to transcend you must first become responsible for the life that you have and the circumstances in your life to have that level of responsibility it's an ongoing practice one of yoga yoga is the practice of yog which is unity and finding unity with oneself. Through that practice, you must realize you are responsible for every situation in your life. And that's a very tough realization to come by. So when I got the news today, when we all collectively got the news today about the next lockdown for however long it's gonna be, I initially had that reaction of anger and I know many people that have a very similar reaction, whether it's anger towards the government, anger towards a situation, anger towards others, placing blame anywhere but themselves. And I had that initial reaction myself. However, we must understand and take responsibility that I myself am responsible for the lockdown that we're in or about to be in. And you must take that same responsibility. As a society in Ontario, we are locking down because of our actions as a society. You know, one of Anand's teachings is about fear and living a life based in fear versus based in love. When you make decisions out of fear, whatever that fear may be, you're making a decision to escape versus one through love. When you move and make decisions through love, that's how you truly live. When we're in constant fear and making decisions based on fear, fear of, you know, afraid of what, other people are going to think about us. Maybe afraid in this scenario, some people are afraid to get COVID. Some people are afraid of confrontation. And some perfect examples, you know, the individuals afraid of COVID, they're going to wear two masks, they're going to wear face shields, and that's totally fine. Or that's a fear based decision. Same way with someone wearing one mask going into a store out of pure fear of confrontation with another staffer saying, oh, sir or ma'am, you need to wear a mask and having to explain whether you have an exemption or not. And that fear of confrontation there, quote unquote, breaking the rules when you aren't actually breaking the rules. There's a fear what other people might think. Oh, look at that guy or girl in the store without a mask. What are they doing? They're spreading it to everyone. When we must ask ourselves, is that fear appropriate to what this has become? Is that fear appropriate to what this was two years ago? 
not going to get into all of the data points on why that fear shouldn't exist. But I want to point out as a result of this fear, it's why we're here where we are. The good news, we have control. I was speaking to someone today and they pointed out that all of the decisions being made at higher levels right now for us on our behalf are for the majority. There's elections coming up. So they're looking at everything. When we talk about politics, they're looking at everything on majorities. What are the majority of people going to want us to do? Some people are angry that they haven't responded fast enough and locked, they, we should have locked down in December and locked down forever for a full year and then it would be gone forever. We don't know. That's again, an anger, fear-based response. When we take responsibility, we now take control. When we take control and we dictate, no, you know what? We're not locking down. That is a disproportionate response to the level of threat that is here based on all of the data worldwide. So with that in mind, taking back that control, we need to ask ourselves, how can we act differently to remove this lockdown? How can we manifest differently to manifest the life we want to live, like the life we're seeing people in Florida and Texas and all over the world live? You know, in Florida, they've been endemic since April of 2021. Almost a full year, they have gone without restrictions, without lockdowns, without mandates, without segregation. These are all fear-based restrictions and avenues the government is using to keep us in fear. You know, looking at the wording through the messaging today, it was all about fear, a tsunami of cases, going to overwhelm everything. That is inciting fear and it's creating fear. And by looking at that and acknowledging it, recognizing it, we now have control over our response. We no longer need to feed off that fear. And that's where I think a lot of people are going to have an anger response. I had an anger response myself. Not just this time, but a year ago in April, when we were locking down and Florida was getting rid of everything. I had a very angry response. I hadn't gone through that to transcend it. And when we got the announcement today, I had that same anger response initially. And then I recognized it. And that's part of taking that quantum leap and transcendence and transcending and growing. Being able to recognize that fear-based response. And then what are we going to do about it? What can you do about it? Ask yourself that question. And it comes down to recognizing whether your behavior is a fear-based behavior or if it's one based out of love and wanting to live. When we're in constant fear, it's not healthy. Not healthy at all. And the amount of fear many of us have gone through over the last nearly 24 months now is not healthy for uh, a lot of people. We've gone through a lot of mental degradation throughout society. And a lot of people are more anxious than they've ever been. 
more depressed than they've ever been. No matter if their income has been impacted or not. I've seen personally anxiety go through the roof. And the mental state and well-being of our society has taken a massive hit. And we, we have that responsibility now and that control, that ownership to end it. We can end it all. Perfect example is in the summer last year. They tried to close playgrounds for kids. That lasted all of 24, 48 hours. Because as a collective, we said no. You're not closing the schools it do, or the playgrounds. It doesn't make sense. And it was turned around. They immediately rescinded that and took it away. We have that power. They make these decisions based on what they think the majority is going to react. When the majority of us start turning that around, they're going to react differently. All they've ever wanted out of all of this is to stay in power. We have the power. They work for us. So what I'm going to leave you with, team, is that thought that we have the power and to really recognize when you're making a decision based out of fear And if you are, reflect on why. Where is that fear coming from? What is the source of that fear? And then from there, you can begin to analyze whether your response is proportionate to the fear. And by doing that, I think you're going to see a lot of people come out of this anxiety and come out away from the fear based decisions there's many places in the world living without fear sure there might be a few people still afraid in those places depending on what's going on with their own personal health but the reality is majority of people in in a lot of places around the world are living without fear. They're living without their economies being destroyed, with lives being destroyed, without lives being destroyed. They're living without delayed hospitalizations and day-to-day surgeries and it could be life-changing surgeries for some, like hip replacement, stuff like that. They're living without any of those delays. They're living without the fear of capacities going up. You know, that incitement of fear, the gaslighting, saying we're going to have 100,000, 200,000 cases a day. Where are those numbers coming from? Really start to analyze where is that modeling based off of? What data are they using? And does that accordingly need the response that we have and when you do that reflection and recognize when that fear-based decision is happening versus a decision based of love and care this whole thing ends we have that power to say no I disagree with this. We're going to do it a different way. And for me personally, owning a fitness studio and part owner of another one, I open those studios to help people. And when I was initially angry by the announcement today, It was because I thought 
someone else was taking away my ability to help others. And I quickly took that step back, took that breather and said, no, I can still help people and I still will. It may look differently, but I still will. That's been my personal mission and my personal path. You know, I've been researching happiness, transcendence, and the like for 15 plus years. And am just now recognizing, and only a few short years ago, I saw that opportunity to help others and go down that path of helping people. And if this video helps one person, I've done a good job. I hope it helps more. I hope it gets out and helps a lot more people handle this situation we are in and get through it, get past it. And maybe as a collective, we can help it end and end the fear-based solutions to this pandemic that should have been endemic for almost a year. Anyways, everyone, Drop a comment if you want. If you want to hear me talk about any other topics, just let me know. I want to start doing more of these videos and sharing more of what I'm going through and what I'm learning through the teachings I'm getting. And again, I just want to help as many of you as I can. Thanks, everyone.